And even though I have seen this uh, exhibit numerous times, it never fails to touch a chord in me. Mm -hmm. And when we walked in today, um, I noticed your reaction. And, and I know this is not the first time you've seen exactly. it, it, seen it either. So I, I would say that this is one of the more powerful tableaus, displays mm -hmm. in the museum. Um, right now, uh, we are into the bicentennial of Mr. Lincoln, right here in Springfield, and the bicentennial is receiving attention not only here in Springfield, but certainly all across the country. What do you see as Mr. Lincoln's most enduring legacy uh, to us in the 21st century? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's twofold, actually. He certainly made us realize that the United States is one entity. It's not 50 separate states. Right. And we pretty much get 37 that. 37 at it was, the time. It was, it was that about 37 at the time. But and even though from time to time people still try to challenge that with the whole states' rights argument and all of that, I think we're pretty set. We, pr we pretty much understand that it is a single entity. So I think that's really important for us to remember now, mm -hmm. and especially when we are divided, whatever the issue is. I think the other thing that he does, the, the other really important thing about his legacy, is that he sort of righted or, or he, he made the promise of the Declaration of Independence real. Mm. Uh, the Declaration talks about all men being created equal and that all men should uh, have life, liberty, and, and pursuit of happiness. All men didn't have that. Right. All women didn't have that. And as a consequence of his belief in equality of opportunity, not necessarily civil equality, but <laughs> equality of opportunity, opportunity. It really did right the wrongs that the country had been engaged in in terms of um, upholding slavery. And I think if we remember that, if we remember that this nation was founded on those principles, but some of our leaders did not follow those principles, and he took us back to that. And so I think that's probably more important than anything else. Lincoln is called, as you know, the Great Emancipator, and you have written uh, quite a bit on uh, Lincoln and the Emancipation Proclamation. Um, do you think that the, there is as much interest in the African American community in the Bicentennial Commemoration as there is in the white community? And if you do, tell me, and if you don't agree, mm -hmm. tell me why you don't. Mm -hmm. There is certainly not as much interest in the African American community as in the rest of the nation. And it's because in the past, African Americans were not included in the mm -hmm. commemoration. There wasn't even really much discussion about slavery and freedom. And you would have thought that because Lincoln mm -hmm. has carried this title, the Great Emancipator, all this time, that someone would have brought that in to the, to the mix. But that wasn't there. And so African Americans did not think that a commemoration of Lincoln's birth had anything to do with them. But I think that's changing. Good. And one of the reasons why it's changing is because of our new president. He has embraced our 16th president wholeheartedly. Yes, he has. And I think that that will be an example to other people to at least become more curious and to look at Lincoln. It's not that African Americans in the past disliked Lincoln, it's just that they didn't think very much of him at all. He was just another president that they didn't have a whole lot to do with. But I think that because Mr. Obama has become so interested in him, it's going to encourage other people in the African American community to see what is it about this man that this magnificent president of ours mm -hmm. would be so interested in. Right. So I, I think the tide is turning, so to speak. It would be good if the tide is turning. It would be good for our nation Absolutely. as well. And being right here on the eve, almost, of, of the bicentennial and looking forward to our president's arrival here in Springfield, um, I, I, think that, I think that bodes well. It does kind of put into, make come alive the things mm -hmm. that you have just said and about his, um, his feelings toward Lincoln and how he holds him up as an example. And mm -hmm. so, anything else you'd like to add today, Edna? Uh, just that I think that we all should take this opportunity that the next few months will give us to really take a look at Lincoln 
and try to understand exactly what the challenges were that he faced. Because right. I think if we do that, we do understand how extraordinary his journey was. Absolutely, it was. Because he, he was a complex, multi-dimensional, not one layer type you bet. president. As he, most of us are, actually. Ab absolutely. He was a human being. Absolutely. Indeed. And I think that's what we need to remember. He was a human being Indeed. just like us, but he did remarkable things at a remarkable time in our nation's well history. Well said. I thank so you very much for your time today. It's my pleasure. Thank you.